Bye, guys. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a while and I got a haircut. Oh my gosh, hope you guys like it. It's a whole different era, whole different vibe, and I am just excited for this era, honestly. So in case you guys didn't know, there is an official exclusive clip of the new upcoming Winx reboot posted on their official Winx channel. Now, there's a whole thing with Winx Club English and Mermaid Magic that I'll get into in a separate video. And I have a lot to say about my own personal life and where I've been, so I wanna put that in a second separate video. For this video, I just wanna focus on the reboot. I did actually film my reaction, I think the day that it came out, and I was so shook, but so much kept happening. So I wasn't able to edit it and then I got a haircut and then I was like, do I refilm it? And there's this whole thing. So I have it, but I'm going to crop my face because I just was not feeling very presentable. So without further ado, here's my reaction. Three, two, one, go. On social media. But nobody follows me on social. What? <laughs> oh my gosh. <gasps> Was not expecting that. Oh my gosh. We love Bloom and drawing and everything. The outfit, the jewelry, everything looks good and super, super Winx styled. Like, one good thing about Winx is every fashion thing you could ever think of is to the T amazing. They could easily t-shirt jeans boom done everything is so exquisitely done like i just saw some random season seven outfits and they're not copied and pasted they are still like so detailed it's like they've got so many fashion designers behind the scenes and behind designing these characters it's amazing well, yes. and we could see her bloom bookshelf up there and i didn't know is that how it always was? After the M, there was like a whole line? That's very interesting. And going back to Bloom and her roots of her being an artist and loving art and all that. I don't get what that was. Like, how did, did someone throw the fire back? What happened there? Maybe it's not too big of a deal, but very good. Like, look at the fire there. That's very good. And that smoke, that was good. I guess it's an emergency, but I just am like that poor fish. <laughs> like, look at that outfit. It's so detailed and good. I wonder if those sort of like leg warmer things are supposed to be like a reference to her flare jeans in season one. Although I think we've seen another outfit on Bloom, which looked more reminiscent of her season one outfit with the yellow shirt. The focus. It's so good. It's so good. And look at the logo. Look at the logo. Look at how she ate that. Look. I'm shook. I am shooketh to my core. And the sounds, it is so good. It looks like the position is back to normal. You see where it says club at the bottom of the logo? In season eight, they shifted it over for some reason. I think the start of the club either started at the beginning of the N or the end of the end, it stuck out way farther and it was weird. This logo has withstood the test of time. I think that's a good thing because it is one stitch of continuity throughout the series. Like, 
we are who we are throughout all the changes and reimaginations and spinoffs and all that this logo has stayed the same but let's talk about this clip the fact that we're back to the park in gardenia i'm excited i'm so excited and Mitzi, are you kidding me? A lot of the controversy was that the leaks came from Miraculous fans or that the same studio that animated Miraculous Ladybug is either what produced this reboot or where the leaks were found. And just from this smile right here, I really hope and pray that the Winx reboot was not produced by Miraculous or anything to do with Miraculous. I, I respect, but I would be so offended if it was produced by Miraculous because I think Miraculous is less than Winx and could never be Winx. So if it were to intertangle, I would be upset because I think Miraculous is a joke. I mean. Let me ask the audience. But what already irks me is the fact that in World of Winx season 2 and Winx Club season 8, Aisha's voice actress is the same voice as Alia from Miraculous. And it just sort of made me so upset. Maybe that's how I also felt, but I guess I didn't really like the continuous changes of the Winx voice cast. Specifically, Aisha's character has changed so much, so it's just like, what is even happening? Now she's got a new voice, now she's voiced by the voice of Alia from this show that is good, and then it takes a hiatus, and then we keep getting catfished by Adrian and Marinette. Like, I was just so over it, so I didn't want to see Miraculous have anything to do with Winx, but I'm really hoping the animation is completely separate. I do want to say Bloom's hair looks really dark. Look at the roots. Like it's very dark. I love the mid part to the bottom. It's like beautiful fire highlights, but the roots look super dark, which makes me a little fearful of like, was she even a redhead then? I don't know. Oh, wait. I think those are pink little bows on the back of Mitzi's shoes. I was concerned, like, I was like, is this a reference to Mitzi's scooter? <laughs> it's definitely supposed to be Mitzi. It, in no way is it not. I mean, her glasses, her hair, her shirt. I don't think anyone's arguing about that. The personal pet peeve, I don't like how the clock is not moving. Like, you can see the second hand being still. And I also like this whole Mitzi thing because I feel like we're actually going back to the root of Winx Club. And of course, they're talking about social media. It's going to be sort of rebooted in a modern light, which is really cool. I can only imagine that they're running from Nut or something supposed to be a reference to Nut because he was the main antagonist in the first episode. And I was actually talking a bit about this on my stream a couple months ago when we watched the first little bit of the first Nick special. We are actually watching all the way through the series with the specials then starting with season two on and the movies there too. We have got to season two episode six. So if you want to come on there every Friday at about 10 a.m. Sometimes may vary. We are reacting to wink so it'd be really awesome if you came 10 a.m eastern time it's a vibe i'm going to be editing each of those streams into new recap podcast episodes so you may have seen the first one up on my channel already if you want to see that stream you can actually watch it i was talking about how i wish we had more of a backstory during season one it seems like the whole first episode we got to know the bare minimum of bloom we just saw some establishing shots of where she lived her drawings and her in her bed and then moving on, and then boom, we're fighting a monster, and we're at Althea, and we're going, and we're going, and we're going. I wish we saw more of that. I want to see where she went to school. I want to see her neighbors. I want to see her friends. I want to see her doing other activities. Her life is not drawing. Like, I just want to see. I want to see. I hope that we get more backstory from Bloom before the magic. I really want to see that. Fate, the Wink Saga did that really well, I think. They did it in a very good way. They added a lot more, although we didn't really see how she ended up there. But I'm having hope for this. But I think that's all we got for now. Now, this literally looks amazing. I am shook. A quick timeline is we had some leaks and then the rainbow posted this official clip and then we got even more leaks. Those second leaks actually showed us some changes. So we were all like piecing things together. Basically, I think 
that the Comic-Con leak is more updated. I think that's what it is. I think the models look so much better. Thanks to Sahirly Winx Club, this has allegedly become confirmed. They DM'd Eugenio and he said the one at Comic-Con is more close to the final version. However, even since then, we've gotten a third leak with a whole different look and style. To me, the second leak with the prettier bathroom looks better to me. Uh, this third leak looks interesting, but I'm not sure really. So I guess I'm still hoping that it's the second one. I think the lighting and stuff looks great too. At least it does not look like miraculous. In the official clip they posted, actually it looks like two different art styles. The one where she's at the desk drawing and the fish tank, that is one. And then the whole second scene where she's running and then she's in the bathroom with Mitzi, that is like a whole different art style. This one frame of bloom literally looks like Julika, Rose, like just the lips and the eyes and the cheeks. I was like, that's miraculous. So I am glad, I am glad that we're changing it because miraculous is a joke. You are disgusting. You are a liar. What? Did you just call me? You are disgusting. You are a liar. <laughs> You suck, you suck, you suck. Did I lie? Did I lie? Does something wrong with saying the truth? <laughs> I feel like I was gaslit, gatekeep, girl boss the whole series, and it took forever. And Marinette is like so annoying and she's like the most Mary Sue, Mary Sue in the whole entire cartoon universe. Cat Noir really got kicked to the curb. What's Julika's akumatization name? Reflect Doll? She was like the villain of five episodes. Chloe deserves to be Queen Bee. Like there's so many things about this series that are one, just bad. Like Winx Club has those things, but Miraculous is like, it, it's layers. It's like, a whole nother dimension. I can't explain it. And like, we're here, you know, Melissa's here, and Jill's like a whole nother level. I apologize for the lighting. I was minding my own business and I didn't actually notice the season six sneak peek clip for Miraculous until I saw it and it was so strange. Like, why would they change their animation style? Why? At all, I did not get that. So here is essentially what is going on. Shout out to Sun Magic for explaining this to me. Let me break it down. When those first Winx leaks were leaked, we realized that it was produced by Assemblage Entertainment, which has been Miraculous's main animator since around season three or four. And then when we saw the season six leaks for Miraculous, there was a drastic change and essentially a loss in quality. After this, the Mermaid Magic trailer was released and two voice actors were voices from the English dub of Miraculous. Adrian, you're not alone. Will you give us a chance? <laughs> this thing, this thing, orange juice. And Hawk Moth. Just one more of these oyster bits to raid. So it honestly seems, analyzing all this evidence, that Rainbow has acquired a lot of Miraculous's resources in many ways. Their animation and their voice actors, like everything. Plus, now Winx is partnering with Playmates alongside their original company, Giochi Preziosi, for their doll production. And Playmates is a doll company that has produced a lot of miraculous dolls. Allegedly, just saying. I don't know if it was some deal or they bought some or people are working for it or they switched just programs and resources, but I think that just totally explains the whole situation with Miraculous's low quality season six and possibly why the second half of the exclusive clip posted to Wings Club looks the way it does. And get this, little Mr. Thomas Astruck, creator of Miraculous, apparently a couple years ago tweeted some little anti-Winx tweets referring to season two of Miraculous, posted June 22nd, 2018. A Twitter user says, this new season of Miraculous Ladybug really is some Winx Club type stuff. And Thomas Astruck says, wow, that bad? <laughs> Excuse me? Excuse me? That's not all. Another Twitter user said, think about it though. 95% of Alia's interactions with Marinette boil down to Adrian. Sure, sometimes they talk about heroes or Chloe, but it's still a major problem in the show. 
it's a reoccurring theme, not something from one episode years ago. I'm not sure exactly what their point is, possibly just that it's frustrating seeing Marinette and Alia only talk about Adrian. Like, is there anything else to talk about? Is there any other dynamics or friendship that could happen? That might be their point. Or perhaps something with shipping Alia and Marinette, or maybe just focusing on that girl duo friendship as the main plot point of the show. But it doesn't seem like it's really a bad tweet at all. It, I don't think it's attacking the integrity of Miraculous. Then Thomas Astruck replies, I repeat, what is driving the show is the love dynamic between Marinette and Adrian not the friendship with Alia. It's not TTS. It's not Winx. Not Witch. Your reasoning is flawed because its premise is wrong. It's like blaming Bridget Jones' diary for not being Thelma and Louise. First of all, season two of Miraculous was pretty good. It was more plot. I can't believe he said that. Wow, that bad. Okay, straight up shade. Rude horrible. That's lame. How low can you go? You're making a cartoon in the same demographic. You really thought you ate. You really thought you ate. There were no crumbs left because he didn't touch the plate. And that's tea. Bon appetit. <laughs> like really, Winx Club is so good, so well known 20 years later. Uh, seven, eight seasons, three spinoffs, literally a whole legacy around the world and you're gonna say it's bad wow wow look where miraculous is okay look where she is eight nine years later look where that got you look where that got you and don't get me wrong you know every cartoon every show is great in its own way because you know some shows have a series long plot over like at least five seasons. Some have a seasonal plot along a couple seasons like Winx and an overall main storyline like we had in season three and then maybe like an overall storyline on top of all that. So it makes sense that Miraculous would try to drag that out over some seasons just like Steven Universe dragged you know everything out. Uh, it's not even necessarily dragging it out uh, but when you're thinking about this one specific moment to happen and knowing if from the start, meaning like Marinette and Adrian, one, just knowing who each other is, and two, falling in love. Whereas compared to Wings Club, the whole thing is revolved around Bloom and her personal discovery of herself, and also the whole coherent friendship and unity going forward, plus their boyfriends and the romantic relationships in addition to that, but mainly like the girl friendship and the magic and the self-discovery and self-character development. I feel like what I'm saying applies to everything, but Winx genuinely is that I think Miraculous kind of focuses more on, you know, the suspense of the relationship. So that ties into his next tweet discussing Marinette and Adrian and the whole show, hence why Marinette talks to Alia so much about Adrian. He says, what is driving the show is the love dynamic between Marinette and Adrian, not the friendship with Alia. And so, if truly that love dynamic is what's driving the show, I guess that makes sense. I mean, maybe it's just me, but in the genre, like, it's more so the personal discovery for me. It's more so the personal magic development. It's more so the friendship. Literally with Lolly Rock discovering she's the lost princess and Bloom and like all the Pretty Cure series. It's really not about the boyfriends. And I remember seeing the pilot clip of like it looking super anime and I could totally get how it's this, you know, romantic thing. It's in France. It's in Paris. It's this whole vibe. But I'm just bringing this all up to be like, you know what? Him saying it's not TTS. It's not Winx. It's not Witch. It's like, okay, are you trying to say that Winx and company are bad because that's not true. I guess he's trying to tell us you can't compare apples to oranges, but girl, maybe people don't really like oranges anymore. It's kind of lame. Like, we all like apples because we like apples. We didn't want orange juice. I'm just kidding. I love all fruits. And that's fine. That's fine. That Marinette and Adrian's relationship and love dynamic is the driving force of the show. But you've got to admit 
you know there's no denying that a lot of winks, a lot of witch, a lot of lolly rock, a lot of totally spies fans are also watching Miraculous because of the same genre. So you can't really get mad at them. I mean, what other magical girl show is there where the girl and the boy's main love dynamic is driving it. It's a whole complex story. They don't know each other. It's this romantic love. But the whole girl power aspect, you can't deny that a lot of people feel that same way and are expecting that and expecting all that and tired of the same old Adrian. Oh my gosh, Adrian. You gotta admit that. So no one's comparing Thelma and Louise for Bridget Jones Diary. Um, and Winx is actually good. Do you have no taste? Would a fellow European disrespect his legend, icon, role model, a genio across the border? I think not. Sis, that ain't it. All right, clap if you think she should suffer. <laughs> Mermaid magic is looking way better than Miraculous, honestly, in my opinion, too. So it just goes to show that, yeah, you might not like Winx Club seasons five through eight, you might not like the modern era, but it's still better than Miraculous. Don't get me wrong. I love the concept. I love the lore behind it. I love it all. But there's so many little nuggets and bits and bobs that I don't like. But that's a whole other video. So all in all, a great, great promo. I am very excited to watch this series. I heard that it's coming out next year and I'm willing to wait Believe me, like, I feel like I've got so much else to do before I can even just sit down and enjoy it. I still haven't even seen the full series of Discovering Italy's Magic, which, if you didn't know, came out last year. It's with the 3D Mythics models, but they look so much better. And the Winx are, like, exploring Italy. It's so cool. And they dubbed it in English. I am praying that we get some sort of similar voice actors from the original. Although with what I heard, it did not seem like that. So that's one sad thing about that. Um, doesn't even have to be like the OG OG, just like Emily Kramer as Bloom, who played her in season eight. Like if they could just bring some of that cast, I would be so happy. I hope, I hope, I hope. I would be surprised if they're not still available, but sometimes the companies do like to change things up. But that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad to be back. Please leave a like if you liked it and comment down below your thoughts on the reboot, your thoughts on the promo, your thoughts on anything and everything. Do you like it? Do you not? Do you wish we had something different? Are you still upset about fate? Because I am. But yeah, let me know. I will be also making a video on Wings Club English and Mermaid Magic and that whole situation and also my thoughts on Mermaid Magic so far. And I will also be making a little update video to kind of show you guys what I've been up to, what's happened, how has the past year and a half been for me, and what I plan to do in the future, what's coming up the rest of this year, all those things. So be sure to check those videos out. And also, I do stream reacting to Wings Club every single Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We have a great time over there. We have a bunch of cool people that come over there. And I know it's kind of in like a weird time, like the middle of the work day for America or super early for you if you're on the West Coast. But it's just what works with my work schedule right now. And if you're in Europe, it's perfect like lunchtime, late afternoon thing. So yeah, I'd love it if you came. I will also still be posting past podcast episodes of the streams we stream and post that on Magic Winxology because that's a whole update I'm going to talk about. And yeah, I do have a new Instagram. If you want to follow below, you can get some more updates on me and what I'm streaming and what I'm posting and everything like that. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.